Hello, everybody, and welcome to this uh, webinar, uh, Investing for Impact Across the Investment Journey, Practical Cases from Latin America and Europe, organized by EVPA and by Latimpacto. I think we can start. Can we have next slide, please, uh, now? Uh, this is the, my name is Juan David Ferreira. I'm the program director at Latimpacto. I'm based in Colombia. And uh, together with me uh, as a co-host is Arnau Picon, the research associate from EVPA. To get, today, we're going to have two real experienced practitioners, um, Walter van der Siepen from Campani, Belgium. He will represent the European vision of the investment, investment for impact. And Santiago Alvarez from Alive Ventures. He's based in Colombia, but they invest throughout Latin America, and he's going to represent the Latin American vision of the investment for impact practice. Uh, before we start, I'd like to show you some rules of the house, uh, the tips and tricks. I know go to webinar is not very, very much used. As you can see here throughout the session, you will be able to open or hide the control panel, which is the console that appears on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, we're going to have 10 minutes for a Q&A session. If you do have a question, please do not hesitate to write it down in the relative section of the control panel. It's just uh, below webcam and above chat. Uh, since the number of participants in this, web in this webinar is quite high, we are keeping everyone muted. And finally, this session is being recorded and sh you, you should be able to watch it and uh, consult this presentation as of next week on EVPA's website and as well on Latin Pacto's website. If there are any technical issues you have uh, throughout the webinar, do send an email to Gianluca Gagiotti at evpa.eu.com. Uh, uh, he'll be doing the utmost work to help you and support you. Uh, this is the agenda. Uh, I'm going to give a welcome and introduction to what Latin Pacto is. Afterwards, we're going to have an introduction to the Investment for Impact Toolkit by Arnau. And afterwards, we're going to invite our two speakers of today in three different sessions. Uh, setting up an, an organization on investing for impact, introduction to the investment strategy, and introduction to the investment process. Finally, we're going to have, uh, as I mentioned before, questions from the audience, and finally, a closing session. Uh, so we're going to start on, uh, on, on, on Latin Pacto. I'm going to introduce you to Latin Pacto. Uh, so what is Latin Pacto? Latin Pacto is a network that aims to mobilize providers of social investment capital. We aim to support organizations searching to generate positive, sustainable, and long-term social and environmental impact. Our operations have the creation of impact by our members and partners at its core. We achieve this by leveraging our knowledge center and academy with our expertise in fostering connections and disseminating research and best practices. As you might know, our operation is 100% Latin American. We, we go from the Rio Grande to Patagonia. We have achieved so much in so little time, in part with the immense support of our sister networks, uh, especially EVPA, who is co-hosting us with, the, with us today, and AVPN. Uh, next slide, Arnau, please. What is our value proposition? Our value proposition rests on four points, and this is how we strive to connect the continuum of capital. First, we connect this continuum of capital that goes from organizations that rely purely on grant making to organizations that have started to make more um, an investment model towards impact. Uh, second, we connect providers of, of social capital from the different silos, foundations, funds, corporate, professional service firms, public agencies, et cetera. There's a lot of uh, family offices, uh, NGOs as well. We connect the entire region and we are 100% Latin American. And finally, we connect over 1,000 social investors and organizations who belong to our system networks, AVPN and EVPA. Next slide, please. Uh, what organizations belong to Latin Pacto? We are a unique network in so far we aim to bring together organizations from different sectors that use different tools and financing mechanisms to achieve social and environmental impact. We offer to capture and disseminate knowledge, connect Latin American actors with peers from the region and from outside it, and we are building a strong spectrum of value-added services. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this slide is perhaps the perfect introduction to, my, to what my colleague are now and our guests Santiago and Bauter will be discussing afterwards. This is a brilliant graph elaborated by EVPA that provides an introduction to what investing for impact means in opposition to what investing with impact is. 
As you can see, investing for impact has social impact either as a sole priority or as a main priority when combined with financial gains. Um, investing investors for impact invest in social purpose organizations in different stages, from those who are still incipient to those who have a proven and mature financial sustainability model. What we're discussing today is two investors for impact who invest in organizations with different profiles with impact, but with impact always at its uh, center stage. Uh, next slide, please. As I mentioned a couple of times before, uh, Latin Pact is part of a global movement that includes uh, EVPA, our oldest sister, and who has been an essential partner in helping us uh, grow in Latin America. Moreover, we also have the support of AVPN in Asia and AVPA in Africa. Next slide, please. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of our offer, we would like to share with you that our knowledge center is creating amazing things at the moment from courses through the Latin Pact to Academy, to research and case studies to disseminate the organizations that are leading impactful change in our latitudes. Next slide, please. Our prime example is the landscape study, which is published that covers seven countries of the region and 36, 37 cases from major organizations working differently towards the same goal, impact creation. And uh, next slide, please. Finally, the second wheel of our offer is connections, and we've developed an ecosystem development area to strengthen this, which has resulted in Port Impacto. Port Impacto is the first platform of its kind that showcases the best investment options for impact and collaboration across the entire chain of social investors, from forum philanthropists to impact investment funds, connecting the continuum of available capital in Latin America to catalyze greater social and env environmental investments. Participating in Latin Pacto is something we are currently offering to our members and partners, hoping to increase the deployment of capital in the region. Aligned with this is that we will also have demo days tailored to the programs we are currently building at Latin Pacto, namely migration, climate action, gender, and early childhood. Next slide, please. Sorry about the hair. <laughs> uh, uh, so as I showed, we are adding value to the region through different ways. Uh, we are a Latin American organization. Uh, Latin American organizations are obtaining tailored knowledge, building partnerships, and having the opportunity to engage with incoming capital from outside the region. While international organizations working in Latin America are meeting trusted partners and are more updated on the deal flow in the region that matches their profile and interests. Uh, finally, I would like to be thank thank very much to EVPA in special its uh, knowledge team for allowing us to translate and disseminate this report. This is the third we have translated so far as part of our strategy to share the concept of investing for impact in Latin America, making these high level reports more accessible to our peers, partners and interested parties in the region. This is our third translated report and together with, with our own research, we believe we are bringing Latin American investors for impact with important tools on how to become even more strategic and knowledgeable about the investment for impact approach and its tools. The toolkit we are promoting today through this webinar it's an important opportunity to learn through an instructive and comprehensive guide, the step-by-step -step for creating an investing for impact organization from inception to consolidation. Several organizations whom we work with and talk to have expressed their interest in developing an organization with this profile, influenced by other reports, meetings with our team, attending our courses, or by reading the material we have available on our webpage. So if you are interested in going beyond knowing what investing for impact entails and want to adapt or create an organization with this impact profile, this toolkit is a must for you. Do not hesitate to contact us at Latin Pacto if you'd like to know more or receive more support on the first steps of creating an investing for impact organization. Finally, thanks to Santiago and Alive Ventures, who is a prime example of what investing for impact looks like in the region and how the support for consolidated social enterprises is also a way to implement this approach. We are certain that his presence today makes a perfect match to voters, who we thank as well by coming today to share the experience with Campani investing mostly in the global south. I now who we thank as well, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Juan David. Uh, thank you for uh, this introduction. And uh, I uh, would like to stress uh, what, uh, yeah, your last words and uh, welcome everyone to uh, join uh, and have a look at the, that what Latin Pact is producing and the research and translations uh, that uh, you have been producing so far. 
uh, by uh, yeah, the webinar of today, since we are uh, focusing on the Investing for Impact Toolkit, I would like, before we give the room to the speakers, uh, introduce a little bit what uh, this toolkit is. Uh, so uh, as here you, you see the cover, this toolkit is a, is a guide for newcomers or for early stage investors for impact that uh, aims to provide an insight on, on, on what works in the impact ecosystem. So it provides uh, tips and uh, best practices and resources uh, that can be uh, implemented in the different stages of uh, investing for impact or what we will call the impact journey, as you will see in a minute. Um, and throughout this uh, toolkit and throughout this slide, you can see uh, many of the EVPA's uh, research uh, and resources developed in the last 10 years, uh, such as the EVPA Charter of Investors for Impact, the frameworks of the main uh, venture philanthropy practices, and also the framework of uh, implementing an exit strategy. So let me go uh, very quickly through uh, what are these resources. Uh, so we can have a little bit of background for, for this webinar as well. Uh, for starting, uh, this is the charter of uh, the um, uh, investors for impact that uh, at EVPA we put together uh, about a year and a half ago. And it's a set of uh, 10 principles that define the DNA and the uniqueness of investors for impact. And it aims to, to guide uh, or, or to, yeah, to, to, to trigger discussions uh, for, for investors for impact uh, that will that will start this journey of investing or of investing for impact. Um, as as uh, yeah, as uh, this uh, defines the investors for impact uh, and, and what is the, the reason to be, uh, they of course aim to apply the ten principles in practice and try to uh, integrate these ten principles in the, in their strategies and in their activities. And we are going to see a bit more of of this uh, today uh, throughout. Um, our practical examples. Um, looking at the frameworks of the uh, venture philanthropy uh, practices, we have these uh, three uh, frameworks on tailored financing, non-financial support, and impact measurement and management. Uh, for those that uh, are not that familiar with these concepts, tailored financing is the process of choosing uh, the most suitable financial instruments to support uh, a social purpose organization. So this can be grants, uh, debt, equity, and hybrid financial instruments. Non-financial support is uh, the provision of uh, support services to a social purpose organization in order to maximize its uh, social impact, uh, to increase its financial sustainability and to strengthen the organizational re resilience of the SPO. And finally, uh, impact measurement and management uh, is uh, measuring and monitoring the change created by an organization's activities and using this information to refine the activities and to um, increase uh, positive outcomes and minimize the negative ones. These three uh, concepts together are the three uh, main venture philanthropy practices uh, and they are displayed throughout the toolkit. So for, through these uh, frameworks, you can understand better how to uh, implement, implement each of these steps in each of the parts of the investment uh, strategy and the investment process. Finally, we also include this uh, framework, which is uh, focused on developing an exit strategy uh, to leave behind when you exit a social purpose organization, to leave behind an organization uh, that um, will have continued impact over time. So as I was mentioning, we have mapped all these steps and also the principles of the, of the charter across the different parts of the journey. Uh, so we will start with setting up an, orga an organization investing for impact then uh, defining the investment strategy, then uh, managing the investment process, and finally the exit. And as you can see, uh, next to each title, these numbers uh, refer, refer to uh, principles of the Charter of Investors for Impact that should be taken in, into account in each, in each part. And also these steps that you see uh, below each subtitle refer to what step of what framework you should consider at what stage. So uh, we hope that this mapping is it's quite hands-on and it's quite practical uh, to provide tips in, in each stage of the, of the journey. Um, as Juan David mentioned, uh, we, have, we um, yeah, published this toolkit by, by the end of last year, but today we are presenting the translations of Spanish and Portuguese of this toolkit. And you can see it in the um, EVPA's website uh, in this link below. Uh, that uh, my colleague Alessia will be also sharing in the chat uh, soon. 
And also, as Juan David said, uh, there are uh, several uh, translations that uh, Latin Pacto has already been doing during the, the last years, starting from our report on impact strategies, also the uh, Venture Philanthropy and Social Impact Investment Guide, and also Financing for Social Impact. These are all uh, translated to Spanish and Portuguese, and of course, the Investing for Impact Toolkit. And uh, looking also at the EBPA uh, website, you can, you can find them, and also you can uh, I would like to invite you to, to dig deeper, to try to find more resources, and uh, yeah, you will find for sure lots of inputs uh, that will help your organization. Um, having said this, I would like to start with the first part of the webinar, which uh, refers to setting up an organization investing for impact, uh, which is really the, the early stage of uh, each organization uh, that you might be working for or uh, representing, and it, 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 um, it applies to, to defining the funding model, the, the legal structure of the organization, how to develop a, a fundraising strategy, uh, all governance issues such as uh, recruiting a CEO, the management team, working out the role of the board, and also uh, abiding by high ethical standards. Uh, there are many types of organizations investing for impact, and they can be set in many different ways by different people with different backgrounds, different uh, sources of capital. Uh, but these, uh, uh, these uh, factors are, are some of the challenges or some of the, the things that they have to go uh, through. Uh, and yeah, these are some, some things in common, let's say. Um, so I would like to start uh, knowing more about uh, how our speakers um, set up their organizations invested for impact or, or how they were set up and how they have been evolving over time. So I would like to leave the floor to uh, Walter and tell us more about uh, how Campani was set up and uh, where it stands on the spectrum of capital and how it's been evolving over time. Thank you very much, Arnau. Uh, thank you also, Juan David, uh, David, for your introduction. Thank you for the invitation. It's a, a real pleasure. Um, and uh, shamelessly, I want to uh, just also make a quick um, uh, commercial for becoming a member of Latin Impacto or EVPA. Campani has been a member since six or seven years and we have greatly benefited uh, from the network, from the learning opportunity. So a very warm invitation to all participants to becoming uh, a member. Next slide, please. So when looking at Campani and uh, setting it up, we so next slide, slide. Ah, here we go. Yeah. So we, um, the crucial point here is that one has to start with the problem, the societal ill that you want to address. And this continuum on, on the slide is a very conceptually, a very useful slide in your dialogue with your investors. So the owners of the fund as well as with the investees. Um, so if you look at the continuum, it starts with grant making on the far left and responsible investing on the far right. And in between those two extremes, a great many, a great many shades of gray. A great variety of actors occupy this space. What's important to note is that there's no value judgment, where you put the needle, where you are in this continuum, is there's no better or worse space to be in, but you have to be very clear to yourself as to where you want to be, where you are in reality, and communicate this clearly and transparently to your investees as well as to your investors. That is of crucial importance. Um, of course, the impact sector as a whole, as an asset class, is still we're still a, a young asset class, and so the sector as a whole is still it's you know we're we're pioneers. Uh, this is something new. Uh, it offers a possible solution to certain types of problems that cannot be addressed as well with other initiatives or other tools that have been around for, me, for many decades. Because it is an innovation, this also means that not all the questions 
today have an answer. We are allowed as a society, as a, as a community, to do some trial and error. Um, of course, you want to limit the errors, but don't go into this space expecting that all of the answers are already available. Um, the spectrum is um, so where you put the needle has a lot of implications, in particular for the risk return ratio that you offer your investors, as well as it implies or inherently in that choice, it allows you to do certain investments and others not. It determines your scope. And so obviously, the right way to go about it is to start with the problem, then think of the right tool to address it, and then find the investors interested in financing that tool. Next slide, please, Arnaud. So applying this to Campani, this is the problem we were designed to address, a specific segment of the missing middle. It is, you know, in the SEGs, it is listed several times, access to finance is one of our society's great challenges. We'll talk in the next segment about our specific strategy, but the point here about setting up Campani is we started with the problem, with providing a specific type of financing that is very hard to do commercially, which is why we have missing, the missing middle. The middle is, is absent, it doesn't exist precisely because it is hard to do. So that is the problem we started with. And so we were reverse engineered a solution. Campani was very much born out of that necessity. We were designed to create a tool to add an instrument in the toolbox that didn't exist before. And that, you know, we, we do, uh, we provide the type of finance, our services, can also not be done with an actor to our left of the spectrum or to the right of the niche that we occupy on the spectrum. So conceptually, again, a very interesting uh, slide, I think, to think about your positioning. Um, that's uh, all for now from my end. Thank you, Arna. Back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Walter. That has been a uh, really meaningful insights. Um, and uh, it's been great to see how uh, these tips actually uh, you have captured them with the, the case of company. So thanks so much. Um, I would like to uh, now see uh, from uh, Santiago uh, that it's coming from Alive Ventures uh, a little bit more on, on what is Alive Ventures and um, how, how it was set up and how it's been evolving over time. Santiago, the is yours. Thank you, Arnau. Um, hi, everybody. And uh, first of all, thank you uh, to uh, Latin Pacto and uh, EVPA for the invitation to, to share the, the, the floor and, and to share a little bit sort of uh, about the journey of Alive Ventures. Um, and uh, just to provide you sort of a, a, a quick overview, Alive Ventures stands for Acumen Latam Impact Ventures. Um, and and uh, we see this as a, as a new type of uh, fund manager dedicated exclusively to invest in Latin America. Um, so many of you may know of Acumen, uh, sort of the international uh, organization founded by Jacqueline Novogratz uh, over 20 years ago. Um, and dedicated to do uh, patient capital investment, which means uh, uh, investing in high impact companies but a very early stage. Um, it's a Acumen's traditional model, it's a philanthropic backed investment model. Uh, so, Acumen being a, a 501c charity in the US, uh, they receive grants uh, and then they invest. In, in, in very early stage uh, businesses that have the potential to scale, have a, a, an, an important impact and, and grow. Um, but because of the risk that they take, uh, their model is supported on philanthropy. 
uh, it would be very difficult sort of to take the same approach uh, and, and same investment strategy and risk uh, with, with, uh, with investors' capital. Uh, having said that, uh, over the years, what Acumen and uh, think in partnership of, of my business partner, Vigilio Barco, and I, we figure out for Latin America is that uh, there is a tremendous gap in investing in early stage companies, which is the work that Acumen is doing. But also there is a very, uh, there is a significant gap in terms of access to finance for those companies that they have been able to prove their business model and now they are scaling and growing uh, uh, rapidly and that they also have impact at the forefront uh, and uh, that impact is at the core of their investment uh, of their uh, business model and that is that, that is how alive uh, 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 been created and that's the genesis of alive is uh, it's a new fund manager um, in a for-profit structure that receives uh, investors uh, capital to invest in high impact companies that they are at what we call an early growth stage meaning they have already proven their business model um, and uh, but they need additional capital to grow and so uh, what what we set out to do uh, with Alive is to create a fund manager uh, that is different from 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 the market um, and basically because of uh, five different components. Uh, the, the first one is that we, we put sort of uh, impact at center, center stage. We measure impact, uh, we um, are accountable uh, for impact performance and management, and we invest in business models in which impact is intentional and is part of the DNA or of, of the, the strategy. Uh, second of all, we are a fund manager that incorporates a gender lens uh, across our investment process from due diligence to investment my portfolio management and then at exit. And we invest in companies that uh, in which we uh, truly believe they are committed to bridging the gender gap that is so prevalent in Latin America. Uh, thirdly, we are a fund manager that we're trying to create a community of passionate and allied investors in the region. Uh, this is uh, sort of a, a motivation of being a partner of uh, Latin Pacto uh, and the great work sort of that, that Latin Pacto is doing in terms of bringing together uh, foundations, philanthropies, but also traditional investors uh, to invest more strategically in impact companies uh, um, in the region. Um, and that, uh, the, uh, for, we are, we are, we, uh, as part of our thesis and as part of the work that we're doing, uh, we are committed sort of to sharing knowledge. Uh, we are a fund manager that is, that, that is, is that is not a black box. Uh, when we approach investors, uh, we always approach them with the intention of inviting them to be part of the community, as mentioned, mentioning above but also uh, inviting them to share uh, the journey, to share the experiences that they, they've had uh, um, by investing in the live ventures. And we as fund managers, we are also committed to share our learnings along the way. Our learnings in terms of investing, our learnings in terms of impact, our learnings um, in terms of uh, how these companies that we want to support can achieve uh, a scale alongside the impact. And finally, uh, and this is probably sort of the main difference uh, between a life and an acumen for you to, to understand uh, the, 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 the synergies, but also difference, is that we also seek to provide uh, investment returns to our investors. Um, so, you know, going back to the, to the, to the slide in terms of the, the, the spectrum of, of, of venture philanthropy and, spec and the spectrum of impact investing, we are in the, uh, in, in, not at the far right, but, but somewhere in the middle where investment returns are also important um, because we think that sort of the, the, we need capital sort of to invest along that continuum of capital to, to be able to support companies. 
um, as they scale and as they grow, um, and and uh, and therefore investable capital uh, is also highly important uh, to be included in this in this uh, in this ecosystem. Next slide, please. So a little bit more in terms of our genesis. Um, you know, um, this uh, Alive was uh, was uh, initially we, we started the formation and, and the structuring of Alive back in 2016. Um, and again, as a as a continuation of the impact uh, of of the um, uh, kind of the, the, the investment spectrum strategy that that Acumen was pioneering in the region. Um, and and uh, as, as kind of the next step in the financing ladder for the impact companies in in, in, in Latin America. Having said that, um, and and getting a little bit into the nuances of of how Alive was formed, um, Alive is a completely independent uh, a structure from from Acumen, the the, the global NGO. is a is a team led autonomous structure um, that it has a for-profit structure um, and this is important and I'm highlighting this, this piece because th this was cr a crucial negotiation with our limited partners, with our investors, for them to feel comfortable of placing uh, or investing capital along this strategy. Um, and so even though we have, uh, we continue having a very close relationship with Acumen and Acumen is um, it's an investor into a live funds. Um, the, the structure itself uh, is independent, is, is led by the team, uh, and it's a for profit structure. Having said that, the, the, the close partnership with Acumen, uh, we also believe it's a strategic, uh, it's, it's a competitive advantage and a key differentia differentiator uh, from other you know, fund managers and, 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 and uh, impact fund structures because we can leverage on knowledge, we can leverage on resources, we can leverage on networks to be able to better support our portfolio companies. Um, later on, I think we will talk a little bit about value add, but for us, we really think that supporting high impact companies is not only about providing capital, it's not only about sending a check, it's really much more than that, it's really about supporting companies uh, through a very tough journey of, of uh, five or even more years um, and, and helping them in terms of uh, financial support, uh, human resources, technology, accessing new markets, and so on and so forth. And so the partnership that we have with Acumen is a, is a great resource to be able to support companies along all these dimensions. And finally, uh, next slide please, just to give you a, a quick snapshot of, of the type of investors that are supporting Alive. Um, you can see sort of on, on, on the left uh, some of the, the, the notable, notable investors that have supported us, which includes uh, three development banks, the, the Inter-American Development Bank, the, uh, we, uh, the Dutch Good Growth Fund, uh, and Bank Coldex, which is the Colombian Development Bank. Um, along with several foundations, uh, local and international, including MacArthur Foundation in the U.S. and Acumen, of course, and then uh, Fundación Bank Colombia, Fundación Sura, and Fundación WWB in Colombia. What is very interesting, sort of, about this investor composition is the diversity of them. Um, so we are very proud uh, to um, to be supported by local investors. Um, usually, uh, you might be you know, familiar with this concept, but usually impact investors are either from Europe, from the US, um, but, but, but there are very few investors uh, uh, local uh, in Latin America, in Africa. Um, and uh, and, and uh, I, I think we, we're, we feel very proud sort of to be one of the few that, that have been able to get you know, one third of our investor base being local, um, um, one, one third uh, being from the US and, and the remaining from Europe. And also having sort of a diverse composition in terms of um, type of investors, meaning having a significant portion being DFIs, but also a significant portion being foundations, and then 20% being family offices and high net worth individuals. Um, so this is this is to show sort of the sort of kind of the diversity of the impact investing space also in Latin America, how it's been progressing, 
um, and how we are starting sort of to to see new actors, also local actors, um, and then also you know highlighting how important is the work of Latin Impact in continue supporting this uh, the, the the growth of of the of the local ecosystem. And I'll stop here. Thank you very much, um, Santiago. It's been uh, it's been great, and, and thanks uh, for sharing more about uh, your relationship with Acumen and uh, this uh, interesting uh, source uh, variety of sources of, of capital. Uh, so we can go now to the second part of the of the webinar, and uh, again, it's a line of, of what you can find in the in the um, in the toolkit, uh, which is the investment strategy. Uh, so the investment strategy, uh, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, um, yeah. So it it includes uh, different the sort of uh, considerations that should be taken into account and, and that define a concrete investor for impact. Uh, starting of course uh, by setting up their impact objectives, uh, which are the ones that will guide the main decisions during the, the investment process of the investor for impact, but also uh, taking into account other considerations such as uh, yeah, the geographies targeted, the sectors, the types of social purpose organizations that are supported, that I think uh, you already touched upon, uh, financial and non-financial support provided, collaboration strategies, and exit considerations. Um, so now I would like to continue uh, again with you, Santiago. Uh, can you tell us a bit more uh, on the investment strategy of their life? Of course. So, uh, I mean, I, I won't spend much time of this uh, considering that, that uh, I already uh, I mentioned a little bit, but if we can go sort of to the next slide. Um, we, we are a fund manager right now that we are uh, based uh, out of Bogota, Colombia, um, and we have team also in Lima, Peru, and we're prioritizing investing in impact-driven early growth companies uh, that they have a presence in one, either one of these two countries. Um, and, and, and why is that? And it's, it's going back sort of to, to my previous comment in terms that we think capital is only one thing, you know, it's, it's only one part of the puzzle, one part of the equation uh, in terms of supporting companies to, to, to scale and to grow. And, and, and therefore, um, we believe that having local presence and teams on the ground to support the companies in which we invest is crucial. Um, so we're supporting, uh, 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 companies also that they're, they're, they don't have to be from Colombia and Peru, uh, but, but potentially also companies, you know, expanding to this market. So we have invested, uh, just uh, to name an example, in a Brazilian um, uh, company that they, they, they have uh, done a good job sort of uh, uh, topping the Brazilian market, but now they're uh, going um, international and Colombia is their next, uh, uh, the, the, their first uh, sort of international expansion. and so we see a, a great opportunity supporting them. Um, we are supporting companies that have prof profitable business models or, or, you know, or, or that or the, the intention is that they will reach profitability along the way and that they require capital to grow. Um, and, and so I think that this is important sort of to make the distinction in terms of, of, of the stage of growth of the, of the companies, because as I was mentioned earlier, um, we are um, a, a for-profit impact fund, and so um, meaning that we are we also have a fiduciary duty, even with our investors, uh, to uh, return the capital and 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 some interest as well. Um, so, but I, I'm, I'm emphasizing on that piece because that that requires us to invest at a stage in which we think the risk profile of the of these companies. Uh, is uh, is uh, is um, um, you know is, is is good enough sort of to, for us to have visibility uh, in, in terms of of the viability of those businesses, their profitability, and how they how they will scale. And you know, going back, this is what makes also the distinction between Acumen and Alive, because Acumen, because it's philanthropic back capital, is able to pay, to to invest in much earlier stage companies. And then a life, for, for example, could be the next financing or the next investor into those companies that Acumen has invested that are kind of graduating from that early stage model and have proven their business model. Um, 
we um, and just just for for uh, uh, the audience sort of to get a sense in terms of what does that mean in terms of company size. We invest in companies that they have already roughly, you know, at least um, 600 or, or 700k of revenue over the last 12 months. Uh, they could be, st be still uh, being uh, making a loss or being red numbers. Uh, but 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 what we want to see is is that they already have traction in the market, and that their impact thesis and business strategy uh, have you know. Uh, uh, um, uh, a good traction and, and also acceptance by, by, by the market. Um, we provide equity um, or, or methane financing. Um, so we believe that the biggest gap in the region of capital is in equity uh, and, and methane being sort of uh, uh, quasi equity instruments. Uh, there are some uh, alternatives sort of to asset debt financing for some of these companies and working capital financing. Um, but for these companies, equity is, 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 is truly uh, uh, important to be able to invest uh, in longer term strategies and not being uh, short sighted by, by, by the, by the um, uh, short cycles of working capital. Um, and so, uh, you know, by providing equity and mezzanine, we become partners of the companies. Uh, we take board seats, we take active participation and representation. Uh, because we become partners for them for the medium to long term, uh, meaning that we 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 our investment horizon is in the range of uh, five to seven years. The mezzanine financing structures are quite interesting because what that's trying to address is the liquidity of the Latin American market, and so in the mezzanine financing structures we sometimes create self-liquidating instruments, but for example tied to revenues. Uh, and, and so creating uh, royal royalties or, or instruments like that, in which the, depending on the company's performance, uh, allows uh, get sort of their 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 investment back, um, and and it's, uh, uh, it's you know independent uh, or different from from traditional debt instruments in the sense that we go uh, we we take part sort of the of the company's execution risk. Next slide, please. And finally, just to give you a, a, a very quick overview in terms of, of the sectors in, in which we invest, um, we have, uh, uh, I mean, when we were in the process of launching Alive, we did uh, extensive research in terms of uh, understanding sort of the market conditions in the region and identifying, on the one hand, where there were good market opportunities uh, for businesses to thrive and to grow, but then also, uh, where there was a match of those business opportunities with high social needs in the region. And that's where we came up sort of with, with, with three sectors along with a like horizontal gender lens approach. So we invest in agribusinesses. And basically here, what we do is we invest in companies that think as anchor companies that on the one hand, they source from small and medium farmers and they provide to them not only uh, um, uh, financing, but they also provide technical assistance, they provide a stable contract, they provide long-term relationships that we think are critical for small farmers uh, uh, to be able to uh, grow and, and, and break the, 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 the vicious circle of poverty. We also invest in a, in, in, in a sector uh, that we call it education slash access to, to formal jobs which is it's a sector that uh, in Latin America is particularly relevant because there is a massive gap in terms of what the private sector is looking for in terms of human capital, and then the skills and the, the access to education that uh, population in the region have. Um, and, and so right now we're seeing also that through the use of technologies, there's been new business models and new opportunities that, that are trying to bridge that gap. Um, and, and, and we see sort of uh, uh, interesting potential in terms of investing on uh, uh, and being, being part of um, the, the ecosystem that is trying to ca catalyze and provide uh, uh, skills and opportunities to low-income population to access formal employment opportunities. Uh, lastly, in terms of sectors, access to energy. Uh, this is a sector in which Acumen is, is probably one of the biggest inspector investors globally. 
and so it really made sense sort of to 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 invest uh to leverage on that expertise to invest in that sector in latin america and basically here we invest this in solar uh off-grid solutions that are trying to provide access to uh communities that they either uh have very expensive so uh, sources of uh of fuel and energy or they they just don't have anything at all and as i mentioned earlier we have a horizontal uh, a gender approach in which we only invest in businesses that they are committed to bridge the gender equity gap in the region that, as you also may know, in Latin America is, uh, is uh, significant um, uh, as, as we, we are one of the regions with the, with, with the more um, dominant sort of macho culture uh, um, uh, globally. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll stop there uh, to leave uh, also space for questions. Thank you so much, Santiago. And uh, as you are saying, uh, there is space for, for questions. So uh, I would like to encourage uh, the audience to post your questions uh, in the chat and uh, we will go back to, to them later during the Q&A session. Uh, now I'm going back uh, to, to Wouter. Uh, and uh, Walter, if you could uh, let us know a little bit more on the investment strategy of Campania. With pleasure, Arno. And of course, it's great um, to go second in the sense that I can refer, please go to the next slide. I can zoom in immediately to where we are different. Um, not like I want to emphasize not to convey that I believe we are better. Huh? It's not a value judgment. Um, but the implications of those choices are important. Um, maybe right off the bat, um, to, sh to put the contrast sharply with Alive, is that Campani's shareholders have accepted that Campani's strategy, investment strategy, can only reasonably be expected, if we do well, to go for capital preservation. So investors in Campani are not looking at an, a risk-adjusted return, far from it. We are a high-risk, low-return initiative. In that sense, we are an example of a fund that is positioned quite to the left of the spectrum that we talked about a few minutes ago. So looking at these bullets here on the slide, uh, you see immediately that we share a number of these choices with Alive and with, indeed with a lot of other funds. We do equity, we do direct investments, we will always require to be on the board as well. But two of the differences is, for instance, we are exclusive to the agro-food sector and we do exclusively small tickets. That is where we believe we add the most value, that is where we believe the network, the multi-stakeholder model that we, uh, how we are organized, where we add the most value, and where we can be as much uh, as you know, where we have the most additionality. Um, next slide. So, in other words, what we do, we provide patient growth capital to cooperatives or SMEs for capex-heavy investments. A good example, the picture below, is in our is uh, uh, our investee in Guatemala, a relatively small cooperative looking to diversify its income stream. And so, with our help, they now have uh, a production plant for Panela organic brown sugar. Um, last, next slide, and I'm going quite quickly. Um, the next slide is to make it concrete. What does it mean? this strategy, the bullets that we have um, chosen to do, like I said, those bullets are the result of the social ill that we are designed to address. And so this is a very beautiful example, a relatively new investment in Nicaragua, a relatively small cooperative. We're talking about just 200 producers. This is very different from, for instance, our deal in Burundi, where we are, where we have invested in a cooperative with 30,000 um, uh, producers. So also on the investee side, as well as on the fund side, you see a great diversity in this impact investment space. 
So back to the story, Costa Empora is the name of the cooperative in Nicaragua. They target their own market. Um, so they have a local currency revenue stream. They are on the shelf in uh, the Walmarts of, uh, of Nicaragua. In fact, 80% of the country's uh, vegetables of the white cabbage that is sold in the supermarkets uh, uh, sector, 80% of it comes from this one small cooperative. So they occupy a niche. And so these people, this example is a very good example of a cooperative that has needed to upgrade, not only to scale, but also to upgrade uh, their uh, systems to, con to continue to comply with the hygiene standards. As everyone knows, hygiene standards, they only go in one direction, they become stricter. They can become stricter in every sector and every country. And so this is one of those cases. And so with our financing, we've um, been able to upgrade the, the washing facility. The one that is pictured is the old one. And now it is uh, automated and the, or it will be, the machinery is actually being bolted to the floor almost literally uh, today. Um, and so it's a, a long-term investment. We're looking at a partnership of over of seven years, open to doing add-on investments. So we are really looking to build a long-term partnership to provide that patient capital to allow them to continue on their growth uh, traje trajectory. Um, back to you, Arnau. Thank you. Thank you very much, Walter, and thank you, Santiago, for uh, yeah, this overview of your investment strategies and your reasoning. And I think it's, it's very nice to uh, have such complementary approaches uh, here uh, today. Um, so now I would like to uh, go through uh, or introduce a little bit the, what is the investment process or how uh, we, we uh, explain it in the, in the toolkit. Uh, the investment process is, is uh, comprised of, of these uh, four parts as, as we defined it. So first, a light screening, which is the deal screening, then the due diligence, then the investment decision and deal structuring, and finally, the investment management. Um, so the, 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 um, the specificity of investors for impact during this investment process is that uh, the, the considerations that are taken throughout this, this, this process are, are uh, focused in maximizing the, the achievement of social impact. Uh, and eventually leaving behind, so exiting a social purpose organization that has a stronger uh, business model and a stronger organizational structure and that is also able to attract uh, further resources. Um, and that's why uh, yeah, investors for impact throughout the investment process are embedding impact considerations and that's why also the toolkit uh, has the different steps of uh, these frameworks uh, mapped throughout the process. Uh, and then you will see uh, each part where, where it relates the best. But also, of course, the, the, um, the principles of the charter should be taken into account in each part of the process. As I think uh, this is the case uh, that uh, Wouter is, is going to tell us. Uh, so, Wouter, if you could explain us uh, how you invest in that consideration during the, uh, during the investment process. Thank you, Arnau. Yes, indeed. Uh, next slide. So, yeah, I mean, about the investment flow, the process, there's a lot to uh, say, and I will just pick out two or three uh, topics. Um, indeed, like any private equity fund, um, in fact, there's a lot with that we share in terms of the process flow, uh, the, the distribution of responsibilities between the fund manager, the IC, the board, you know, those types of things you will find they're very similar. Um, the impact investment sector is different uh, in one very substantial way, which is how we put the social impact front and center. Uh, and very often the shareholders, as much as the investees, require uh, the fund to be able to report on it. That is ultimately the, um, the driving factor. So measuring and uh, reporting on the social impact does add a layer of, of complexity that you wouldn't necessarily find in a private equity fund. And of course, issues such, that, such as attribution, you know, is it really 
thanks to Campani that we see this social change? Is it Campani that made that change? And the question of additionality, uh, how much additional social change is due to Campani? Those are, of course, big conceptual questions that are inherent in the sector, but you also find that in the grant making sector, not easy uh, to solve. And of course, the quantitative part is in some ways the easy part, but it doesn't necessarily tell the, the, the most interesting part of the story. It's the qualitative part, uh, the testimonials, the sense of empowerment, the sense of pride that is impossible to measure uh, really, but that is really, but that is the, of incredible um, importance. The second point I'd like to make in the context of the investment process is that yes, you know, in, if we if we look at in the, the charter, number four is take risks, but be careful about what risks you're taking. It is not in the due diligence process. It's not you know, you know, uh, covering your eyes and you know just taking a stab at it. It is a very professional business we're in, um, and Campan is definitely an example of a fund uh, where we don't compromise on the due diligence. The due diligence you'll find is as thorough as any private equity fund with that additional layer of complexity being the social impact. Um, and so you don't compromise on the due diligence. You compromise on the amount of risk you're willing to take, the exposure you're willing to take, and investment you're willing to do when others are not ready to do that. On the one hand, on the other hand, the instrument you're prepared to deploy, the you know the types of instruments that we use will always be strengthening the balance sheet, and they are by definition they're never collateralized. Therefore, also our risk, but we believe there is that you know there is a benefit in using that because precisely because it strengthens the balance sheet, and the additional hardware that we finance can then be used as collateral, for instance, for trade finance providers. So all of this is done with a reason, all of this is thought through, uh, but you have to be precise or think through where the risks um, are that you want to be taking. Don't just hope for the best. You got to be doing something with in the knowledge of what the risks are you are taking. And then, of course, have a strategy to mitigate and manage the risk. Um, next slide, please. So also on a last post, a couple of points on the process regards the instruments to use. Um, earlier we spoke and, and Arna was uh, you know, referring to the EVPA toolkit. We referred to the big range of instruments available in the impact sector. Um, in the experience of Campani, we find that quite a few of these instruments are in fact too complex for our investees. Remember, we're talking about cooperatives in some of the contexts we work in, such as in, in Burundi, Rwanda, and Congo. Not everyone even knows how to read and write. So that is a reality we have to live with and not you know, even fewer of these business leaders uh, can read a balance sheet properly, can uh, make NPV calculations, etc. So to talk about a shareholder agreement, about um, you know drag along, tag along rights, preemptive rights, all of those things you'll find in a shareholder agreement, and this is just pure equity, is beyond uh, the absorption capacity of many of the cooperatives that we deal with, and more sophisticated instruments like convertibles, etc., or profit sharing mechanisms, are almost always excluded simply on the basis of the absorption capacity. Um, and so the instrument that we choose is in function of the strategy, not the other way around. Um, this is an obvious point, but it must be emphasized. And of course, um, striking the balance is not easy. Huh? Um, there are trade-offs uh, in this sector between you know, the amount to which you wanna you know, nail everything down and get you know the investee to you know reporting obligations, um, you know uh, reps and warranties, uh, co-decision obligations. All of these things 
can be negotiated and pretty much you have the upper hand because they are desperate for the money. Uh, but so you want to balance that with what is reasonable, uh, whether you know you don't you don't want to lose sight of the finality of your fund. You want to empower. You want to generate that social change. And so my advice, if you will, would be to not lose sight of your fund being a means to an end, not the end uh, in itself. Final thought in this on this. Um, you know, thinking about instruments in the broader picture, uh, you want to be clear about how you define success. Define success, how you define it at fund level, how you define it at deal level, how you define it towards your shareholders, how you define it towards your investees. And so again, here you see that at least you want to have a definition of that at least on two axes. One is this, the, the risk and re financial return and the other is the social impact. So all of this mixed together makes for an investment process that I would, I dare say, is relatively, all talk is relatively complex and nuanced. Um, so I yield back, Arnaud, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Wouter. And um, yeah, I see uh, that meanwhile we are also having uh, some questions in the chat. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave the floor to to Santiago uh, to present uh, um, his uh, yeah the, how they embed embed the impact considerations during the investment process. But meanwhile, I would like to uh, encourage you to uh, input more questions in the chat in case you have them. Since uh, then we are gonna have the, the Q and A. So Santiago, the, the floor is yours again. Thank you, Arnau. So for, first of all, I, I think, I mean, uh, uh, Walter's comments were just uh, really spot on. Um, and, and so uh, I, I won't go into, more, into too much detail in, into that respect. Um, I, I just want really sort of to highlight uh, uh, three key considerations. Uh, in the slide, sort of, you can see sort of the traditional sort of investment process. But, but I want to highlight sort of three considerations that I think are uh, what makes us, uh, I mean, that are our core of our investment process. Um, and the, the first one is that impact for us is front and center. Um, and so um, when we're looking at a potential uh, investment opportunity, the first thing we looked at, we looked at is impact. And that, I think, probably is the biggest distinction from uh, just a traditional investor, you know, um, because w when we look at, the, uh, at a business model, uh, we, w the first thing we try to do is really try, try to understand how, uh, how they are benefiting and impacting uh, the lives of uh, either, you know, the, their suppliers, if it's in the agribusiness sector, or their um, customers, if it's in the access to energy or education sectors. Um, and, and so we, we pay a lot of attention, dedicate significant resources to try to understand um, how that impact is being achieved. Um, and, and more importantly, is how intentional that impact is. Um, and, and, and why I'm highlighting this is because in this type of investments, which are, you know, like relatively early stage companies, um, you're really investing in people, you know, uh, when, when we make investment decisions, uh, there are definitely, you know, business plans and, and, and goals sort of that want to be achieved. But these companies face so many challenges and uh, uh, as, as they try to scale that in many instances, sort of they have to pivot their business models, adjust to the market conditions. And, and when you look back, you know, four or five years down the road, uh, it's, it's very likely sort of that, that, that what you set out to achieve has changed, you know, from, from what it was originally uh, uh, thought or, or conceived. And therefore, the people is what it does, usually does remain uh, as a constant um, and is, is, is sort of the bet sort of that you're, that you're, that you're uh, making at the beginning. Uh, is that the people that you will be backing, meaning the entrepreneurs, the founders, they are the right uh, people to take the, this business forward to navigate sort of the business challenges and market conditions, but preserving impact. 
And I think that is crucial sort of for our investment process and investment considerations, because we've been in many cases and, and, and kind of uh, looking back that, that if impact is not embedded sort of in the, in the hearts of these entrepreneurs and, and, uh, and the founders, when things get tough, uh, when, when companies hit a bump or, or you know, when, when companies hit a wall, uh, for example, last year with, with COVID and, and this year, if impact is not really sort of part of their, of their DNA, part of their values, then uh, you get into a situation in which there could be, you know, cases of trying to find the easiest way out or, or the easiest solution. And so you, you, you get into mission drift. Um, and, and that's not a, a scenario in which we want to be. And so, you know, going back sort of to investment process for us, impact is the first assessment that we do. And it's not only about sort of how they're achieving impact right now, it's really about sort of the people that is behind these companies, their motivations, their values, um, and, and uh, uh, getting sort of a, a, a judgment on, on whether they will stay truthful sort of to, to, this, uh, uh, to achieve this impact and this goal. Um, I think aside of that, as, as, as you can see on, on the slide, and, and it was also commented earlier, um, our investment process is, is uh, uh, I think, as rigorous and thoughtful um, as any other investor. I mean, we, we don't take uh, cut, uh, cuts, uh, we don't uh, do shortcuts. Uh, our due diligence process in terms of understanding a business model, understanding sort of the market potential, understanding risks, understanding unit economics, understanding uh, financial performance, uh, and, and ultimately, you know, scalability and viability is as thorough and thoughtful as uh, I think, you know, just the traditional investors uh, do. And, uh, and, and we've taken that role very seriously, again, because we have also a fiduciary duty as part of our, uh, of our model in terms of uh, the capital that, that we are investing. Um, the third uh, 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 consideration that I wanted to share with you is that, as, uh, uh, I mean, as investors, um, and, and I think it was also a, a comment just, just, just now about, about Bauder, like we have the upper hand traditionally because the, there is such a such a um, uh, uh, sc scars of, of of capital that entrepreneurs struggle to find resources and the, and, and therefore you as in, like we as an investors usually have uh, 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 an advantage, but we really want sort of to to break that uh, that uh, uh, circle and 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 that uh, business operandum. And so we have a philosophy that we operate with our entrepreneurs and, and potential uh, investees uh, with open books, meaning that all the diligence that we do, meaning that all the financial projections that we do, all the analysis that we do, we also share that with investors, uh, sorry, with the entrepreneurs uh, to come up with the business terms of the transaction that are suitable to the entrepreneur and to us, and to get to a common ground in which everybody feels comfortable, in which everybody understands sort of the rationale of one consideration or the other, understands sort of the risk perspective that the entrepreneur has, but also that we as investors have. Um, and, and, and by doing that, uh, we believe that we um, are able sort of to agree upon terms that are transparent and fair to everybody. Um, next slide, please. And lastly, uh, I, I just want to uh, emphasize again uh, that as part of our investment process, um, we think capital is only one piece of the equation, it's only one component, but uh, the companies and especially companies that they put impact at the, at the center, uh, they will definitely face significant challenges to grow. And therefore, we have set up a structure to be able to support our companies along the way and across different dimensions. And so one uh, example that I shared earlier is sort of the partnerships and the networks that we have developed uh, uh, locally and internationally, such as our partnership with Acumen. 
uh, but also and and the partnership sort of that we have uh, uh, for being on the ground with, with with local actors such as universities, government agencies, um, accelerators, um, and, uh, and 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 these kind of organizations being part of the ecosystem. But I think uh, another uh, sort of important consideration that we've that that we've uh, um, taken forward is the creation of a technical assistance fund that is a parallel uh, vehicle dedicated to support um, our portfolio companies. And so some of the investors that supported Allies first fund, they also supported this technical assistance fund in which they donated some capital as of now. So you get an idea, Allies is a $28 million fund and the technical assistance fund is a one million uh, uh, dollar fund um, that is dedicated to support portfolio companies. And we support through this technical assistance fund. We support portfolio companies uh, in three dimensions. The first one is impact measurement. Um, and we've discussed this uh, 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 throughout the, the presentation. But for you know, impact is front and center of our strategy. So we also think that we need to measure and report impact. Our incentives as fund managers are also tied to impact. So the, the carry that traditional managers receive uh, in our case is not only tied to financial performance, but also to impact measured by a third party. And so we have created a partnership with 60 decibels to be able to measure the impact of all our portfolio companies at time of investment two, three years down the road and, time, and at time of exit. We want to understand also the evolution of impact. You know, as in traditional business, businesses, you, under, you, you look sort of at the evolution of financial performance and operational performance. We, will, we also want to understand what is the evolution of impact. And by partnering with 60 decibels, we are not only measuring inputs and outputs, but actually we are measuring what we call the depth of impact, which is understanding how lives are being impacted from a quantitative but also qualitative perspective and this is only achieved by talking with the beneficiaries which is the core expertise that 60 decibels has developed with their lean data methodology the second dimension in, in which we support our portfolio companies is uh in gender um as you can recall this is core uh, all, all, all like a, a core sector or horizontal strategy for us and we have a partnership with Value for Women to be able to support uh, technical assistance uh, to our portfolio companies in terms either to understanding what are the gender gaps and also what uh, coming up with action plans sort of to bridge the, uh, the, 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 the gaps that have been identified along the way. And then finally, there's a third dimension, which is just supporting companies in traditional business needs, whatever a particular company needs. Um, so um, I'll, I'll stop there, sort of to, to um, leave enough time for questions. Happy to go deeper in any of this if it's useful. Indeed, uh, thank you very much, uh, Santiago. Thanks, uh, yeah, thanks uh, both of you uh, for for uh, these insights and uh, uh, sharing with you uh, your practices. Uh, so as we have a couple of minutes left, and uh, there are uh, some questions uh, that have been posted already in the chat. I'm going to leave the floor to, to Juan David that can translate you these, these questions. Perfect. Thank you very much, Santiago and Wouter and uh, Arnau as well for the comprehensive explanation of your, of your organizations and your uh, investment profiles. Uh, so one question we have is addressed uh, to Santiago by Seb Barriga, and he asks, it seems the industry believes there is a trade-off between profit and impact. How do you address those concerns as you present a life as a for-profit impact fund? Yes, Juan David, I think that that's a very good question. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, um, I think also there, there is no single answer for that question. And it also, it, it really depends on where you stand on the, on the sort of investment spectrum with impact that uh, a voucher sort of uh, explained earlier. Um, for us, that we're a for-profit fund that wants to achieve both impact and financial returns, we feel that we are, we, we are, we are in a position in which we, we only invest in companies in which 
their business model, I mean, the impact is, at, is part of their business model and it's part of the DNA of the business model. So just get, let, let me give you an example sort of to try to illustrate what I mean. When we invest in education companies uh, or in the education sector, what we look for uh, prior making an investment is trying to understand what are the beneficiaries uh, of, of uh, this particular business model. I mean, what are the students? What is the socioeconomic background? Uh, what, what, what is, uh, what, what's also sort of the quality of the education that they will be provided or that they're being provided by this company. And so this is, a, if, if we get comfortable that the people that are being benefited by, by, by the company are, you know, either vulnerable or, or, or poor population or at, a big, uh, at least at a big extent, and, and if we are confident sort of that the, the quality of the education being provided is, is actually uh, um, good enough sort of to support these companies to access better opportunities down the road, uh, that is a model that by our definition, it is achieving social impact. And that it, it, if also, you know, we believe that this is intentional, that the funders are committed to that, that is part of their values, then that's when we get comfortable in terms of seeing, like uh, looking at the two, three, five years down the road and seeing that for this company, there is no trade-off between impact and financial performance or an impact and growth. Because as the company scales, impact will scale. You know, as the company grows, more students will be part of their business, uh, more students will be part of, of their solution, and therefore you will have greater impact and greater financial performance. And so, and so this is just, uh, um, and, and it's, this is a topic in, in which we could, you know, spend hours sort of debating, um, but, 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 but our, uh, our um, comfort uh, in terms of avoiding sort of that conflict is by investing in businesses where impact is front and center, is part of their business model, and therefore there are not, not, uh, not trade-offs down the road. Thank you so much for that complete uh, answer. And uh, finally, as a last question to both of you, I would like to ask you, uh, as Campani has lower ticket sizes and targets only capital preservation while alive, has bigger ticket sizes and has a risk adjusted return, how do you think the two approaches well, the, of your organizations can be complementary with each other? And I would uh, like to invite Walter to answer first. Uh, great question. Yeah, I mean, I think we are designed indeed to be complementary. Um, our exits would be, you know, where Santiago and his team uh, enters. Um, and in fact, uh, with Acumen, we have uh, had such uh, that pleasure already with Acumen in, in Africa. Maybe if I if I may add one thing to what Santiago said before I pass the floor to Santiago. You know, when I look at this crucial question of impact versus uh, versus return, you know, the normal equation is risk and return. The higher the risk, the higher the financial return you demand. Um, or otherwise put, the higher the financial return, the more risk you're prepared to take. In the social impact invest investment, that equation has a third factor, namely the social impact. Unfortunately, it is not so that the higher the risk, that therefore necessarily the social return has to be higher or is inherently going to be higher. That is unfortunately not the case. And so indeed, when you compare um, Cam uh, Campani with uh, Alive, my challenge will be with my investors. The investment proposition that I have for the investors is going to be less attractive than, than, than Santiago's. Uh, but the flip side of it is true too. I would argue that the the types of deals we are equipped and allowed per our strategy to make, I believe we would have a number of degrees of freedom that Santiago does not have. Again, it's not a value judgment, it's the result of the choices we've made. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Santiago? Sure. Um, I think, uh, I mean, I fully share w uh, what uh, Wouter just, just mentioned, you know. Uh, I really think there there is there is need for different source of capital uh, in uh, to really address sort of the the, the, the social uh, needs that, that 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 we have. You know, I, I don't think you know there is one silver bullet. I don't think there is you know like the uh, uh, 
you, you can make a, a, like a value judgment in terms of what, what, which one is better than the other. They, they are different, but um, I think uh, I, I would 100% agree that they are just complementary, right? And you need both actually. And, and you, you need both, and actually you need another one that is in, in some instances, you need purely philanthropy to address you know, humanitarian issues. Like that cannot be addressed you know, by investment. Um, so the, I think you know, it's, it's not one or the other, it's, it's just how we can work together and how we can you know, address uh, the different social needs with the right type of capital. So Wouter put, uh, put it very well. I think, you know, he, uh, a company, uh, which is very similar to Acumen, uh, I, I see, you know, very complementary strategies, they can take much more risk than the, one, the, than the risk that allies can, can take. And so what, what, what is really interesting is that if that is a strategy, is to see, you know, how you deploy a strategy that is actually taking those risks. Because... What would what, what would wouldn't make a lot of sense is is if Campania and Alive's are chasing the same deals, right? Because then, you, like, you would be creating like market distortions or be using different different types of capital for 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 one one similar company. So, but but definitely, uh, uh, I think you know Campania, which is the role also that Acumen plays on some instance, can take greater risk, the leverage some opportunities in uh, the leverage in terms of risk, some opportunities, so that, for example, Alive, that is channeling investors' capital, can invest in, in, in those companies that have, uh, uh, that, in, that, that they are, that are graduating from their, you know, strategy. And so we can provide sort of the next stage of capital. And hopefully, there will be even a next stage, a stage of capital of larger investors, more institutional investors, that they've seen the companies, that company supported, Dana Life supported, and now they say, you know, I can make this mainstream, you know, or in our case, for example, a lot of the exit strategy thesis is around the strategic investors. So not financial investors, but rather thinking, seeing companies uh, uh, that they see uh, um, how these high impact driven businesses can be a source of entering to new markets can be a source of learning for them, um, and 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 uh, and so that you know they, they can also invest and like provide an exit for us. So so uh, yeah, I think my my final final thought would be is there is need for all these type of capitals uh, to really create a ec healthy ecosystem uh, and and to be able to support high impact companies. Thank you very much, uh, Santiago and uh, Walter. We, we truly agree that uh, the key concept we want to reinforce here is the one of a complementarity and collaboration. Uh, and well, that's pretty much it for today. We'd like to thank you very much, Santiago and Walter, for their amazing contribution to us. Um, on behalf of Latin Pacto and EVPA, we would like to thank uh, your assistance today. Uh, we really hope you gain knowledge and insights on the investing for impact approach through the experiences of Santiago and Walter, who, are certain, who certainly will continue building amazing things through their organizations. These two perspectives, as we just uh, heard, uh, provide a clear glimpse on the fact that there is there is not just one route towards impact, but that taking into but that we have to take into account the diversity of profiles, thematic interests, and vision. Impact is not a one-way street, but a place where multiple approaches join together to improve the livelihoods and well-being of millions of people, while also as well improving the way we connect and protect our environment. Uh, finally, we would like to invite you to follow us, Latin Impacto and EVPA on social media to be updated on our upcoming events, uh, reports, and news. And we would also like to invite you to subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, so thank you very much once again for your assistance and have a really good day today. Bye-bye and thank you very much.